Today, we're going to look at Stanley Kwan's 1987 film Rouge. This film is adapted according to the original romantic ghost story written by Li Bihua, using the method of flashback to narrate the plot. Yuan Yongding, a man worked in the Hong Kong newspaper office, met a woman called Ru Hua who wanted to publish a notice for a missing person but had no money to pay for the advertisement. Yuan asked her to come back again the next day, but she refused and followed him all the way. Between their chat, Yuan was surprised to find out that this woman was a ghost who died 50 years ago. Then Ru Hua told her story to Yuan and his girlfriend. As early as in the 30s, she was a prostitute. At that time, she fell in love with Chen Zhenbang. They wanted to get married. However, due to the status of disparity, Chen's family were strongly against this marriage. Then Chen ran away from home and gave Ru Hua a rouge as a signifier of their love. Unfortunately, they were addicted to opium and Chen did not have enough money to afford their life. Finally, they decided to die together and they made a promise that they meet at a certain date in the hell when they die. The result was um, Ru Hua died while Chen Zhenbang was saved. Fifty years had passed. Ru Hua returned to this world to find her lover since Chen never appeared in hell as he promised. Finally, Yuan and his girlfriend found Chen in a film studio as a studio actor, living a hard life. He is penniless and frustrated when he saw Ru Hua. Ru Hua was heartbroken and gave back the rouge to Chen, said thank you, and then left. This film is an example of the trend toward nostalgia cinema in Hong Kong. First, let me talk a little about the history of Hong Kong's modernization. As Natalie Huang says in her essay, Rewriting History, Hong Kong's Nostalgia Cinema and Its Social Practice, by evoking Ray Chow's description of post-colonial nostalgia, she says that Hong Kong's modernization started in the 50s. Since in 1949, a large number of refugees fled to this island to escape the terror of communist rule and to search for political security and economic prosperity. These newcomers, including capitalists, industrialists, businessmen, professionals, and skilled workers, brought new ideas, technologies, and labor force from their hometown, which built the base of Hong Kong's modernization. And later in the 70s, after some serious riots in the 50s and 60s, the British government put forward new policies to help Hong Kong to adapt to the situation and to secure Britain's economic interests in the Far East. So the 70s were booming days of social construction and transformation. And in the 80s and 90s, Hong Kong was a place with economic prosperity. But when the Hong Kong people were just about to enjoy the prosperity of their home, the signing of Joint Declaration in 1984 broke the stability of Hong Kong's situation because the 1997 handover is not simply a political event. It not only symbolizes the change of political culture of Hong Kong after 150 years of colonial rule, but frames social cultural transformation of the city in the transitional period being in the mid-1980s. So people at that time did not know what would happen in 1997. The future of Hong Kong became very uncertain. In this case, cultural productions such as films were made to represent the post-modernity and post-coloniality of Hong Kong. Film production then becomes an ideological apparatus from which social consciousness as well as collective behavior can be measured. Rouge is a good example of nostalgia cinema, for it allows people to see the change happening in Hong Kong. By contrasting Ru Hua Zhenbang's love story with Yong Ding Chu Zhuan's one, Stanley Kwan uses mise-en-scene camera movements and actors' performances to show the audience the differences between the two periods. When representing the contemporary scenes, the tone of the filmic images suddenly turns to a grayscale, and the camera moves in a rush which brings up the rhythm. Yong Ding and Chu Zhuan also both wear an oversized old sweater, which shows the contemporary couples do not appreciate love as much as the old couples because they can meet each other without dressing up. Also, the intimacy between the contemporary couples can also be easily interrupted by their job duties. When Yong Ding gives a present to Chu Zhuan, she does not even have time to look at it at first because she has to leave for work. But when representing the 
um, Chen Zhengbang and uh, Ru Hua sings in the 1930s. When they meet for the first time, they sing Cantonese opera together, and the color of the scene is fairly vivid. The camera moves in the rhythm as if it is mimicking the rhythm of the actions between the characters. The camera moves slowly as if there is a dancing rhythm into it. What's more, characters in the 1930s scene all dress well and behave in a polite manner to each other. Especially when Ru Hua and Zheng Bang have sex for the first time, the gentleness and carefulness of Zheng Bang evoke people's appreciation for the attitude towards love in the past. But in contrast, when the contemporary couple Yuan Yongding and Chu Zhen have sex, it seems like they are in a rush and just want to finish it quickly, so the sense of manner and appreciation is totally lost in the contemporary world. Everything seems to happen very fast. By contrasting the two periods, audiences become aware of the past and they start to appreciate the past as if it is a souvenir from the lost time. In Rich House's essay, A Souvenir of Love, she talks about the chance encounters. She indicates that the predominant feeling that our time in this world is but a matter of stumbling upon things and events, long inscribed in an unconscious ancient memory, distinguishes Li Bihua's sense of nostalgia from other contemporary Chinese writers. For example, the tune Ru Hua and Zheng Bang sing together when they meet for the first time is a story of a romantic encounter of a prostitute and a dandy which signifies that Ru Hua and Zheng Bang's encounter is itself already a modern reenactment, a nostalgic replay of older tales, legends, and romances. Therefore, in these writings, she constructs loss as something that is traceable in the intertextual relations between the past and the present. Ri Chao then goes on to write that nostalgia is also an alternative temporality for a community. She argues nostalgia is nonetheless most acutely felt as an effect of temporal dislocation. Nostalgia is also first and foremost a register of the movements of temporality. So Rouge and lots of other films made in the 80s and 90s, their narrative structure is itself nostalgic because of the sensitivity to the movements of temporality. In terms of Rouge, the repetition of juxtaposition of the past and the present evokes the sense of nostalgia. However, some critics such as Frederick Jameson thinks that nostalgia cinema as one of the dominant forms of postmodern culture is depthless, is a work of prestige without historical significance. Yet, Natalie Huan argues that nostalgia films are different from historical films. A historical film is like a documentary in which authenticity of historical reference is emphasized. But a nostalgia film represents the imagination, the fantasy, and the fictional performance of human history. Huan argues that nostalgia films such as Rouge not only gives people a way to escape the uncertain future, but also it is an alternative form of the colony's history. Because the history here is in the form of collective memories of the Hong Kong people, rather than some important historical events. Huang also argues, to rewrite or reinvent the history of the past in cinematic form is to reconstruct the collective identities and memories of the society, because it is a different story and history from the actual one, and it is usually a story narrated from the social figure's point of view rather than the discourse of anti-colonialism under the title of nationalism. And in Rouge, the story is about Ru Hua, Zheng Bang, Yong Ding, and Chu Juan. These four people are all social figures. Although their stories are fictional, they can still evoke the collective memories of people from Hong Kong, showing them the past Hong Kong through the use of settings, costumes, and rhythms from the 1930s, so that people become aware of what the past is like. And by comparing to the present, the film anchors the audience to have a sense of loss through the contrast between the 1930s and 1930s. 1980s on screen. In conclusion, our group's close reading on the film, Natalie Huang's socio-political critique on nostalgia cinema, and Ray Chow's direct analysis of the film in regards to the nostalgia theme, all agree that nostalgia cinema is a popular trend and genre in Hong Kong cinema in the 1980s and 1990s. And the film Rouge directed by Stanley Kwan and released in 1987, is a perfect proof of that. What do all of you guys think? This is the end of our video essay analyzing Stanley Kwan's film Rouge. Thank you guys for watching.